Iceland's been a part of my musical world for a long time. I think initially as an imagined place, just a last frontier, a place with two moons and black cliffs and volcanoes. And then as I grew older and saw what a central place it was for neoclassical music, discovered many of the artists I love were from there, eventually got there and explored it mostly alone. So the music I write is both imagined landscapes and wide open spaces and doors that open to who knows where. I would never say I hope that people feel this one thing from an album, but I hope that people feel and remember that, that they need to and that they can and that music can bridge them there. The style I play in is called neoclassical, post-classical. Neoclassical is a bit of a misnomer, but I suppose understanding it as a new way of interpreting classical music, which draws on minimalism, which draws on ambient pop, which draws on a whole lot of different structures. I started playing classical piano when I was five, and it was a supernatural process. I could just do it. It was really strange, nobody really understood it, but I sat at a piano and I just intuitively knew what to do. I practiced every day, I loved it. I was playing Bach and Mozart and Beethoven. I did lots of classical competitions and performances. I was enrolled in Juilliard for a little while. I was gonna go to Manhattan School of Music. Perfectionism is incredibly important in the classical world. When it's perfect, it's sublime. And I think when it wasn't perfect, it felt devastating. And then at some point I just went, no, it's not feeling right. I felt straight jacketed and I wasn't performing as well in the conservatorium context as I should have. And I went and studied literature and I worked for the circus. I actually just walked away completely for a long time. I remember having a chat with my brother. I said, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I want to go. And he said, well, what is music to you? And I said, it's like, a language, it's like a way of decoding the whole universe. It's like a way of understanding who you are or what things mean. And it's like, well, I think that's your answer. <laughs> I began writing my own stuff very consciously. Look for chords and look for melodies and kind of try and draw sounds out of the silence and out of the air and out of my memory of all of these pieces that I'd played. Often I will sit on a single note and just try different chords. They all have such a different colour and I would sit and listen to them and you can do this for a really long time until eventually I just landed on that one which did feel like the opening chord for that piece. I am a method composer, I've realised lately. So everything I write, I kind of live through it and draw it out of myself. The music is so wonderful like that because it does unlock stuff that's kind of tightly held onto. Not one particular thing, not even a few, but I think just the state of feeling and the state of being alive in a wonderful and terrible and painful and beautiful world and how we find voice for that, which I can only do in music. Words always fall short. Yeah, a really popular way to perform and record within the neoclassical world is to drop the felts down behind the hammers and have this really muted, felted, intimate, close sound. So it's instantly kind of textural, velvety, soft, mysterious, and quite different to the open sound without them of a piano. Which is kind of full and bright and like really resonant when you want it to be. But yeah, this is a very, very different form of storytelling with the felts. I 
Iceland became a place that I kind of dreamt of. It entered the kind of tapestry of the works that I composed. I composed them all here, um, but I was imagining trips that I'd had. My first album is called Do Not Move Stones. And that line actually came from Anne Carson's translation of a single remaining fragment of a Sappho poem. In different ways, it's woven its way into the music in the sense of I'm interested in memory and voices across time and what we, what we remember and what we look for and, and where we go. Something that interests me in minimalist music is that you can return to a theme again and again and sit with it. And in so doing, explore time. You move forwards and backwards and stay in the same place and what, what happens to a note when it's repeated, how that makes us feel, the kind of heartbeat that, that comes out of that sort of rhythm. It was quite extraordinary then, having completed the songs, to release them with an Icelandic label and then get to go over there and record these same pieces in a concert hall in this city, in this beautiful kind of iceberg on the water in the middle of Reykjavik in almost a more intimate format. It's a moment of coming full circle to go there and perform these songs after many, many years exploring how I'm playing now. It does feel like my own sound. I've come home to a sense of my own voice and my own expression and what it is I want to say and how I might say that. <laughs>